in the middle. Chief. I concur. <laughs> Thank you both very much. And, and you've changed my mind. I will withdraw that portion of the. I'll just stick to the 1200. Okay. Yeah. And I will say that. Well, we still have the. No, but we have a second. Trustee, we have a second. Do you want to go back to the original? Yeah, so can we just ask her if she okays that? Yes, she, she has to approve this in order for the Yeah. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so you're with Ross. Okay. So back to the original motion, which I don't need to have repeated. Does anyone? Okay. Oh, come on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just, one point of clarification. What we're talking about <laughs> is a street closure that goes from 10 a.m to 7 p.m. The event runs from noon until 6 p.m. Right. Okay. Right off the sheet. It's 6 all the way Trustee So we second it. Yep. Um, I just want to say um, I'm really I am impressed with this proposal. It answered all my questions for being a new event. And it's um, really ambitious, like in a good way, and really well thought out, and uh, the proposal was really well written. It answered all my questions. It shows an incredible level of collaboration and trust and creativity, and I'm happy to be a partner with them. And um, so that's, I just wanted to go to the point, because it, it's not lost on me. Like This was a very, very thorough proposal and very well thought out. And thank you for um, covering the cost of the overtime police. Um, and I know that these costs can become burdensome for everyone, and it is. I, so I'm very glad that you pointed out the collaborative nature of this, um, and that it's a greater good um, type of effort. So I'm happy to support it, and thank you. Thank you. And I also wanted to um, say that I'm also impressed with this. I'm always happy when we have community um, celebrations, festivals, events. We've had a lot of, uh, in the last couple of years since I've been on board, I've seen a, a, a rise in these, such as the Surf Atwater, which is now an annual event. I know that doesn't involve a street closing, but it does bring a lot of people into the community. Um, the Criterium, which has been going on a while, thanks to the bid, the World Cup event, which also, we got a lot of national and maybe even international press from that, which is earned media, which brings in, you know, that's, Eyes on Shorewood, it's free marketing in, in a sense. And also, in my opinion, it improves the value of, of um, quality of life here for our residents. Um, the Packer kickoff party. Um, <laughs> I, I also, you know, this is another celebration community event, regardless of the annual or otherwise. Um, St. Roberts um, does an annual event that does require some street closure, and that's something that's been going on. It's been a long standing tradition. It brings a lot of people into the community. Um, they also did a 5K run. There have been, there's been a 5K run from the school district. I'm, I'm sorry, you guys, I know. Um, and the 4th of July parade, and there's probably much more that I'm forgetting. And I really hope that we continue to see this kind of collaborative nature. I love that fact that it's just not one business or not just Kensington Square, but this is the um, entire entertainment district of Shorewood coming together to realize something that, in my opinion, benefits the community and the region. Um, and it's also, you know, the, the bid discussed this and proposed this, and these, the business owners, the business improvement district um, board that, and um, members that recommended this, and thank you for all that hard work. Um, it is a way for us to support our local businesses and, again, uniting. And, I, of course, any decision or lack thereof will impact the business community and the residents. And I know some businesses might not like the street closures. I get it. There's always a trade-off to any decision that we have to make. And we have to look at the entire village. And this is one of those times that I think we're doing this. Um, and, again, if we are a community that really stands behind the fact that we want to attract locally owned community businesses and keep our businesses that we have here, we do have to sometimes take a risk as a board. And it sounds to me like many of the board members here tonight, if not all of us, are in favor of supporting this. So um, I will get off my soapbox now. <laughs> and um, we have a motion, a very long motion, and a second. Um, any further discussion? Can we take a vote? All right, I will call the question. All those in favor of the motion as stated, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously, six to zero. Thank you, everyone, for your time and patience. Thank you. Thank you.
Now we have a little bit more business. You're welcome to stay. Okay, we're going to move on. We are going to. These are two items we had. Uh, uh, you recall last uh, last public works committee meeting, uh, two weeks ago, day of this board meeting, we had a lot of discussion about the communication plan and what we need to communicate, how we need to communicate, and whom we need to communicate for both Wilson Drive and. Lake Drive. And what we have in our package is the revised, uh, updated communication and project management plan. Uh, taking item D of 6D1 first, Wilson Drive communication plan. A couple of things. Um, we are not what we're acting on. We are acting on what I'll shortly make a motion for is the approval of the communication plan. The schedule that we see has non-communication items in it. It has, as, as Councilor Rosa pointed out, elements of the project management plan and when project activities are taking place. We're not acting on that plan. Those are in that plan because they inform when communications need to happen. Uh, and, and that way also inform us why the, the communication uh, plan is set up the way it's set up. Um, I would direct your attention to uh, probably the most significant item with regards to Wilson Drive and tell you what was discussed in committee, uh, what was approved in committee, and I'll make a motion. If you look on, if you're looking electronically, it's page 55 of 92, uh, the cost estimate, this is the cost estimate for Wilson Drive. The items in red are the updated items. And what we approved in committee is to go out with a village-wide postcard. Uh, the postcard that will go out is uh, informing all of the residents of both the public meeting, uh, project kickoff meeting for Wilson Drive, and the public information meeting and listening session for Lake Drive, South of Capitol Drive. As well, there will be a specific letter um, going out inviting folks to the Wilson Drive project information, project kickoff meeting. You see there option one, option two, option three. Uh, in committee, we approved, and my motion will include option four, which is, um, uh, as you see, option one, adjacent properties, option two, uh, went a, a couple of blocks east to go to Woodburn, option three went farther east to Memphis, to Morris, um, option four is for all of the uh, residences east, excuse me, west of Oakland. Uh, this will be the offer. All of the residences north of Capitol, west of Oakland would receive uh, the letter in addition <coughs> to the postcard that is village-wide. The uh, kiosk uh, at the election stations, um, the, the special mailer for the off-street parking, these are folks that have permits for uh, parking, uh, Wilson Drive parking, the information in the school you see. Uh, signage, um, you see there's uh, Oakley Trail sign, Wilson sign, DPW made. Electronic pro programmable rental, that last item, electronic programmable rental um, was, was, we wanted the information on, you know, what about one of these big billboards, you know, or big signs that, you know, you might see on larger projects, you might see on the highway. Um, and you know, what was decided in committee uh, was that we can, um, we can we can save a lot of money by having DPW make signs, uh, make signs that would announce uh, there's a public meeting, come to the public meeting, make signs that say uh, construction is started, construction is starting next week, the signs that say lane closure is starting next week. The signs won't be updated. These are not signs that will to be to, that are to be made weekly just for those three big events, public meeting, project starting, lane closures. Um, and so um, what we have, and I'm going to ask Trustee Rosick to summarize what those costs are because your notes were better than mine. Um, we didn't come up with final costs, but um, they were around. The postcard mailing you'll see on that page was 1548 
for the option four, which was west of Oakland, the mailer, uh, it, it, we, we estimate a double of what is there now. So it's 450 to be safe, we said 1,000. So that would take it up. And then the last, you know, we still have the remainder 25, 1150, um, 16920 for the for the um, signs on Oakleaf Trail, and then you know rounding up DPW for those you know, 19420 or 200. So the estimation was it came to about 3,000. And that would be absorbed through. 3,000. 3,000. Just a point of clarification on yes. the signs to be made by Public Works. For Wilson Drive, we discussed having two signs made for which to be determined by staff that we would place at either end of the project limits on Wilson. So whether it was whether the staff had felt that notifying people the date of construction was more important or detour information or whatever that was, that there were only two signs identified and that was a an estimated cost of $194.20. Mm -hmm. It was just an so, uh, well, two signs, but two signs multiple times, like three or four times. You mean, but those are just for two signs. Two signs. So one ninety four twenty was for two signs. Correctly. And that it might have a couple of things on it. Is that? No, I think when we put the project plan together, the intent was that the sign would indicate construction starts, you know, X date. Oh. It really was a notification for the, the start of construction. Oh. If you wanted additional signs for different oh. phases. Just think in two hundred dollar increments and let us know how many of those you want to say. Isn't in the project budget there was uh, provision for barricades and, yeah. and uh, detours and de I mean isn't there some provision in the project budget for for indicating detours and things like yes, that? Yes, that's that's traffic control. Um, that that's the responsibility of the contractor. But right, so it's not like these are the only two right. signs we're gonna have on the roadway. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and these costs would be absorbed from the same budget, so it's all it's just part of the budget. Uh, so with that, I will move uh, to approve the communications plan as uh, presented uh, with uh, the inclusion or the expansion um, or the letter with kickoff meeting invites to extend to all houses north of Capitol. West of Oakland. Second. Discussion. What the postcard we talked about? A little postcard, a big postcard. What what size postcard are we talking about? The staff, the size of the discretion of staff, and as of now, we're looking at a five by seven size. Um, the the printer thought that the standard three and a half by five or um, would be too small. Um, five by seven is about the largest size that you can go on a standard first class rate. Wow. If you go larger than that, then you're talking like a 62 center. And okay, I just wanted to know yeah. if there. My other question was the signs on the Oak Leaf Trail. Uh, where, I mean, how, where are you going to fix those signs? Well, we would have to get permission from Milwaukee County, um, probably just to sink a couple of temporary. Um, like a, a U channel, like a metal signpost, because those go in and out very easily. Um, and the thought was that they would be advance notification to um, to the users of the trail to just as you know caution. You know, you're entering. Maybe not. We'll have to figure out the, the exact wording, but just to alert them to the fact that there will be construction directly east of the trail, so that if they're you know intending to. To bike or through the, they're just aware that they're entering it. So you're actually zone. sinking a pool into the concrete. And That's well, no, not it would be in the, the dirt, the gravel to the side of the path, um, but that would be contingent upon Milwaukee County granting us permission to do so. But it's the intention of the DPW to reach out to Milwaukee County. Yes. Okay. All right. Are, are you? Did you have anything else? Okay. I wanted to put out um, that the fiscal note is incorrect, um, so or maybe just not applicable. We talked about the committee a little bit, and I forgot to say it when he was giving his, his update. Um, 
if we are focusing just on the communication plan, it would probably read approximately 3,000 for those identified communication costs that we're voting on tonight. So I don't think we need to amend it because it's just a memo, um, correct? Uh, but I do want to also say, because it's in here, I can ask, I've been asking, so if I have to put it in future agenda items, Chair, let me know, um, or President, let me know. Uh, but it states, again, um, I got clarity from our, our director, our village manager, that the, the budget that this week was for Wilson Drive, because we're going to be getting construction bids in, so I want to know what we're going to compare to with what is the total budget for Wilson Drive. As it stated here, it looks like it's 3.5 plus 75 is 400. I got clarity from the village manager this week that in, um, it was 3.5 plus 75. That that 400,000 was included, so that would be 3,575,000 3, just because we're going to get the bids in, so we want to see if it's lower or higher than what we approved. After the meeting, just so you know, after the committee meeting, Mark um, gave me a month contrary information, and he says it's actually the three. So I just like follow up again confirming what the project budget that was approved is. Total. All three 